Hey everyone, today's video is sponsored by Haunt a Killer. Around this time of year, many of us are cooped up inside the house without much to do, besides sitting on the couch, scrolling through one social media app after the other, or listening to countless creepypastas trying to pass the time. While all of these aren't necessarily the worst things that you could be doing, it is nice to take a break every once in a while and to try something new. If you're following this channel, it probably means that, like me, you're obsessed with horror movies and the horror genre in general. And, like me, you may be already seeing every half-decent horror flick and are constantly on the lookout for something new. Which is why I was so excited when Hunter Killer had reached out to me about their new Blair Witch game. If you aren't familiar with Hunter Killer, Haunted Killer is an immersive murder mystery and horror game told over the course of six episodes or subscription boxes. Each box is full of realistic evidence, maps, police reports, and more to provide a horrifying and immersive experience. You'll use these clues to solve the ongoing murder mystery. It's like a horror movie in a box and you're the main character. Their newest mystery centers around the Blair Witch universe in which Rosemary Kent, a woman who lives on the edge of the infamous Black Hills Forest, needs your help to find her missing son. To reunite the Kent family, you must investigate the mysterious forest yourself. Will you face down the horror of the Blair Witch and those who serve her? Throughout each box, the narrative will continue as you learn about the disappearances in Burkittsville and the powerful forces that reside in the Black Hills Forest. Are you brave enough to uncover what's been happening around town? Or will you become the next person to mysteriously disappear? Haunted Killer is the perfect activity to play during social distancing. My friends and I hop on a video call every time our boxes arrive and we work through and play the game together. It's a ton of fun and it's almost like you're in your very own creepypasta. And if you can really handle it, this Blair Witch game is designed so that you can play it by yourself, making it the creepiest thing you can do when you're home alone. After playing through the first few episodes, I'm anxious to receive the next box so I can finally get to the bottom of what is happening in Black Hills Forest. I really recommend that you all check out Hunter Killer. They have over 100,000 active subscribers and over 2,000 five-star reviews. So you know they're pretty good at telling stories and this one may be their best one yet. Right now, you can go to huntakillercom slash MrCreeps and use code MrCreeps for 20% off your first box. Again, make sure to use code MrCreeps for a 20% discount. Link is in the description below. Thanks again to Hunter Killer for sponsoring this video. If dark gray clouds suddenly form in the sky, go inside. Draw the curtains, lock the doors, get to a cellar if you can. Whatever you do, don't look at the things moving in the clouds. I could tell you who or where I am. But it would probably mean nothing to you. Suffice to say, I'm not from the USA, but from a small, unimportant country on the edges of Eastern Europe. I'm writing this in the hope that it will somehow get out onto the internet in time to warn others of what's coming. Phone lines and network connections have been disrupted in my area. Why and by whom? I don't know. Heck, maybe what's happening to my town is happening everywhere. Maybe you're cowering in a cellar too, hoping that the clouds won't come any lower and swallow your house and their gray embrace. Maybe you don't need to read this to know that something is very, very wrong with the sky. But if this is only happening in my area, you all need to know before it's too late. I was working when it all started. I live alone in a small town out in the countryside. 
My job is translating documents and legal contracts for several large companies, which means that I can work from home most of the time. It's also one of the most boring jobs that you can imagine. That day was as tedious as it gets, made even worse by the fact that the weather outside was absolutely lovely. It was late summer, the sun was out, I could hear birdsong from the street. And here I sat, stuck inside, slogging through 37 pages of legal documentation that I barely even understood. Only the promise of going out in the evening and getting a few beers with my friendly neighbor couple, Patrick and Ellie, made it all bearable. When my phone pinged an incoming message alert, I thought nothing of it. Probably Patrick making sure that we were still on for that evening. I finished up the paragraph I was writing, flicked into my inbox and opened the newest item. It read, Attention citizen, this is an emergency announcement. Please follow these orders without exception and await further instructions. Close all windows and doors. Pull all curtains and blinds closed. If you cannot do so, go into a room without windows and shut the door. Do not leave your house. Do not look up at the sky. What the heck? This was the first time in my life that I had gotten an emergency announcement like this. Heck, I didn't even know my country had an emergency announcement service. Men, what were those orders? Why shouldn't we look up at the sky? And so I did what any curious, bored young person would do. I got up, went to the window, and had a look outside. Don't ask me whether I'm a dumbass or not, because it's pretty obvious now that, yes, I most certainly am. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but I sure as heck wasn't ready for what I saw outside. The day had darkened. In the minute or two, I had been reading the message. Gray, low-hanging clouds seemed to form in the sky. Even as I watched, they seemed to grow, spreading further and further, reaching slowly like clawing, crawling fingers to seize the edges of the horizon. Was this some sort of freak storm? Was that why we should close all the windows and stay inside? As I watched the darkened sky, I began to feel strangely unsettled. There was something not quite right about the clouds. The way they coiled and shifted. The way they seemed much more solid and lower to the ground than usual. The way certain parts moved in unison within their depths, almost as if... Almost as if something massive was moving inside of them. I cried out and leapt away from the window. I'm not a coward, I dare say, but at that moment, I panicked. I tore the curtain across the window, horrified of getting even one more glimpse of that twisting sky. And then I ran through the house, making sure every curtain and blind was down, locking the doors, and finally sitting down in my living room, shivering. It took me a few minutes to calm down and for my breathing to settle. Eventually, I even started feeling a bit foolish. What had I been so afraid of? There was nothing outside. The clouds. It was probably just a trick of the light that had made the sky look so strange. Or just abnormal weather patterns. Nothing more to it. I jumped and then laughed at my own foolishness as my phone rang. Picking it up, I went to pour myself some water. Hello. Hey man, this is Patrick. How you doing? Hey dude, I smiled, relaxing at the sound of my friend's voice. 
Yeah, it's pretty good here. Got a little spooked by the weather outside is all. Did you get a weird automated message just now too? About not looking at the sky and stuff. Patrick laughed at the other end of the phone. Yeah, man, shit's whack, am I right? I couldn't help but smile. Patrick was the type of person who would fake his own funeral for a laugh. Nothing could keep him down. That's actually why I'm calling you, he continued. Unless you want to risk alien abduction or whatever this is. I guess we're off for beers tonight. Ah, oh, crap, you're right, I said. Shame, I was looking forward to seeing you. Hey, say hi to Ellie for me. After this is over, we can grab a bite to eat, maybe. Hey, yeah, man, that sounds good. By the way, what do you think this could be? Ellie was saying some crazy conspiracy stuff. Like the government is testing new aircraft or something. Sometimes it's hard being the brains in this relationship. And distantly, from Patrick's background, I heard a faint. Shut up. We both giggled. I don't know, man, I replied. There might actually be something to that. I looked at the sky before I closed the curtains. Weird clouds everywhere all of a sudden. Looked like there was something moving inside of them. Probably just a trick of the light, though. Hmm, I don't know. When Patrick on the other side of the line. Uh, that sounds crazy, man. Maybe I'll take a look, too. What's the worst that can happen, am I right? Yeah, yeah, just be careful for the aliens, dude. I laughed at my friend's disbelieving tone. If they come to kidnap you, remember to tell them to leave your neighbors alone. I have work to do, and otherworldly abduction might mess up my timetable. I say goodbye to him and Ellie, and I hung up, and went for another glass of water. And that's when I heard it. The gentle patter of rain on the windows. Other than that, there was no sound from outside. Even the birds had quieted down. I decided to cook some lunch. It looked like it was going to be a long, boring day of work, so I might as well eat and then get on with it. I just started heating up some water when I heard someone shouting outside my house. It was faint, muffled by the rain and the curtained windows, but quite unmistakable. I went to open the curtains and look outside and I stopped short. A strange sense of foreboding and horror washed over me. If I opened the curtains, I would see the sky again. That very thought filled me with an uncertain fear. Why? What was going on outside? What was I so scared of? The shouting drew me out of my reverie. I pressed my ear to the curtained window to hear better, and finally, I recognized the voice. It was Patrick, and he was shouting, screaming, as if in the most terrible pain. The hills with eyes, the space with no dimension, they're watching. They've seen me. They descend in space is meaningless. They will arrive. The travelers from beyond the clockwork. The watchers from beyond the stars. God, oh God. I stumbled back from the window in shock. Patrick's voice, usually so carefree, was twisted into an agonized shriek. I can only imagine how loud he must have been, screaming for it to carry all the way to me through the walls of both our houses and over the rain outside. A crash of glass outside made me jump. Patrick's voice returned louder and clearer. He must have broken the window and crawled outside onto the lawn. The rain, the rain, the tears of the clockwork, the tears of God, descending. I've seen you, and you've seen me. I can't hide. I can't hide. Under the skin of the cosmos, under the surface of the ocean, the eyes behind the moon, they've seen me. Something changed outside. It took me a second to recognize what it was. The rain had stopped. Everything was silent for a second. The universe drew its breath. 
and then the concussive bang of a gunshot made me jump. There was a hideously organic gurgle from outside, and then the thump and splash of something heavy falling to the rain-soaked ground. Some sudden mental resolve, the desire to know what just happened and fear for my friend seized me. I rushed to the window and lifted the corner of the curtain just slightly to see outside without catching a glimpse of the skies. I screamed as I saw what was lying on the grass outside. Patrick, lying limp and spread eagled, the grip of a handgun stuck from the ruins of his mouth. He had rammed it so deep down his throat that it hadn't fallen out, even after ripping through his head and splattering its contents all over the ground. I stumbled away from the window and fell to the ground in shock. What was happening? What had happened to Patrick? And then I realized. He had looked up. Irreverent, carefree Patrick. I told him about what I had seen in the sky. And he had looked up. So go inside. Close the windows, draw the curtains, lock the doors. And whatever you do, don't look up into the sky. There's something in the clouds. <laughs>